Hey everybody here. Uh, Dirk with Loki's Reverie again. It is Sunday. It's October the 4th. Uh, running a little bit behind schedule, so things uh, might be a little bit rushed over the next month, but I thought we'd take the time to do another tutorial on how to take your prop to the next level. Now, last tutorial I did, uh, we took one of the foam skulls I made in the previous tutorial, and we utilized that into making a cheap prop. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to build a cheap animatronic. This one's a little bit uh, extensive. Uh, it's almost all the way put together, but uh, just a couple quick pointers on things. <clears throat> now I'll show you that the prop here. Alright, you remember this guy here from uh, the last tutorial. I was going to name it Herb, but the, my wife and kids said that it looked more like the Terminator, so now we'll call him Arnold. Now, as you can see here with Arnold, I've mounted him and given him an arm. This arm here is actually just a piece of wire that I have running just with a simple staple there right into uh, where the shoulder was. And it is just wired into the back of this, which was an oscillating heater. Now, I picked up the heater for two bucks because the heater element it didn't work, but it did plug in. So what I did is I don't know if you can see that well here in the dark. Um, I took out the heating elements and wired it so that when it's turned on all that will work is the oscillating uh, motor. Now that's a little mechanism down in here. It uses a rotary motor to move uh, back and forth kind of like this only real slow. Now I've recycled this little dude here. Uh, this is a mask I picked up for a dollar at Goodwill and for another dollar I picked up this Daphne Scooby-Doo wig. The dollar store was obliging enough to have skeleton hands. Uh, heat gun and spray paint made it just a little bit better than what it was before. And this heater had uh, an LED light for power on so I wired it into two LED lights. So now We'll show you the basic effect that this guy is going to give. As it stands right now, it's uh, pretty bare bones. It needs covering, it needs some other things, but it has some fun parts to it. Uh, so, here I'll show you what we have now in motion. Just Alright, here we go. It's kind of hard to see as it stands now, but with the heater unit on, and I have the temperature turned up all the way on it, um, even though the thermostat is out and all it does is rotate back and forth a little bit. Let me get you a close up here. Uh, this We called this guy Fred last year. Well, Fred here you see I've, I wired the 5mm LEDs in for the eyes and I use spray foam, there we go, for the bottom. Alright, so that's pretty much all he does. It's a simple movement, but it's enough to give it a good creep out factor. Now I found an old canvas tarp in my shed in back and we're going to cut that up and since it's already ripped and distressed looking we'll just darken it up a little bit and that'll be a good cow for it. Now this little buddy here has a little bit of a kicker to it. Now you see this plastic tubing right here? That goes to a little fountain uh, attachment here, a little fountain pump I ran across for five dollars. Okay, sorry about that. Wife with coffee, that was excellent. Alright, so this little pump here, uh, as you can see, loops around through here and I have it duct taped to the, uh, to the uh, wire arm here and that goes into one and then another and then a third T to give me four four little tubes here that water can come out of uh, when the pump is on. Now water coming out of it, not a, not a huge scary thing, but water tinted red, put a black light over top of it, a cow on it, and suddenly it becomes a creature of the night with a severed head that's oozing blood. And now you see I went a little bit overboard on the guts but uh, that's no big deal. The guts were made, as you can see on the back, I stuffed the mask with uh, foam I had left over, some duct tape, some wire to hold them about where I wanted to, spray foam over top of that, and it's the same painting technique that I used on uh, 
Arnold here, which is basically just slop it on there and have fun. All right, so what I'm doing right now, you see this cardboard out here, is I'm laying out the pathway where the head swivels back and forth so I know where to put the water reservoir. So I'm going to build a water reservoir and line it with thick plastic to make it watertight. And then I am going to cover up the front fascia of that heater a little bit. So just in case any water starts splashing around, it doesn't get in the electronics because a short would be bad. Uh, and then we'll cut and put the cow on there and we'll take a look at it when she's done. But as things stand right now, it's pretty good to go. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, up and kind of test running. Let you see the fountain at work here. We don't have the water tinted yet. You do a little bit of tweaking on it, but thus far it's okay. Okay, so here we are with uh, the cloak done up in a multicolor. We're going to put it under a black light when it's all said and done. So the other color will help make it pop a little bit. As you can see, you've got good rotting torso there. We've got good water. Now I'd like to hide the hose a little bit better, but there's not much I can do about it. Um, doesn't really matter. The pump's not powerful enough for me to run that hose uh, through and out everything. Well, we could like tolerate the sizes of maybe like yeah. intro or something. And so here you go. Out of scrap lumber, junk, old tarp, things like that. Total cost when she's all said and done is about twenty dollars or so under black light nice and spooky So happy Halloween from Loki's Reverie.